Ready? Steady? Go. Go! And welcome to Sacred Food Reviews. <laughs> How about that for an intro? No? <laughs> we started this new series and after 10 seconds, you know, I was like, maybe we should record everything because since the beginning, you know, we're... Um... Yeah, let's watch it. Ciao. <laughs> Central Chile is undergoing several years of drought. But it wasn't always this way. Until 2008, the village water came from a local spring and canal. That water is no longer there. Se terminó el agua del río, se terminó el agua de los canales. But it's not the drought that stole the water from Quebrada de Castro. This village is parched because of a worldwide feeding frenzy. The avocado boom. How did this happen? How did the avocado become so powerful? Vegans. Avocados are very fickle. They like good weather. They like that 72 degree humid right above the beach in Hawaii. <laughs> when it drops below 30 degrees, avocados after four hours at that temperature of under 30 are damaged. The national awareness of healthy foods grew, the Puerte avocado turned out to be nutrient rich and full of the sort of ingredients doctors approved of, like potassium, fiber, and monounsaturated fats. These were studies that were paid for by avocado growers and by the Avocado Commission. You see? Always the people that do the studies are the people that want them to be there. Them studies that proved that avocados were healthy, and we still think that today were produced and paid for, funded by avocado growers. That's always the case. Mexico is the birthplace of the avocado. Growing conditions are perfect, and the Mexican crop had the power to undercut the entire U.S. avocado sector. So for decades, the U.S. had kept the border closed to any Mexican avocado imports, until NAFTA. In 1993, the U.S., Canada, and Mexico signed a North American Free Trade Agreement, opening their borders to a new surge of trade. But the windfall of NAFTA had a bloody cost. The avocado turned out to be so profitable that it became a magnet for the violence and corruption that flourished in the lawless free-for-all of Mexican organized crime. There was new money in Michoacan, and the gangs smelt it. They bribed Mexican agricultural officials to get the names and addresses of the most successful avocado farmers. Viniendo ya hacia Tancitaro, salen dos pulanos ya armados y pues encañonan. Ahí en el carro más o menos duramos caminando como una media hora. Finalmente nos bajaron del vehículo, nos subieron un cerro ahí. Y ya me dicen que, este, pues que se trataba de un secuestro. Mi compadre me habló. Dice, Manuel no va a llegar. Le digo, ¿por qué le digo, salieron fuera? Dice, no, dice, es que se los llevaron. ¿Cómo que se los llevaron? ¿Quién se los llevó? Dice, los secuestraron. Yo con pues, mucha preocupación porque era cuando le decían que, que les mochaban los dedos, que les mochaban las orejas para pedir rescate. With the ransom paid, the kidnappers abandoned Lucatero in the forest. He walked for hours until he found a bus home. Yo tardé unos dos años en poderme estabilizar emocionalmente. Yo veía un vehículo que venía un vehículo en el camino, no hallaba si si regresarme o qué hacer, ¿no? Eso fue muy muy duro, la verdad no se lo deseo a nadie. No, I was just thinking. Obviously, there's there's this idea that. The people that are buying avocados are contributing to this, which is obviously the case. 
but this is also the the nature of the, these people right this is about an industry that's grown to a certain capacity and these mafias which function in these countries and that's how they function it doesn't matter if it's avocados or anything mm -hmm. else yeah. as there's so much money in the industry that's how they function we can go deeper and deeper in this why there is a mafia why there are the cartels no, but, you know, know the point i'm trying to make the point is not buy less avocados just know what what's happening which would obviously probably naturally make you buy less here where we live avocado doesn't grow that's it so i don't buy avocado the way i see it is like at the end everything is related you know we want to import a fruit that doesn't grow here because we are obsessed with super food and this super healthy bullshit you know <laughs> because it's like that so we import the food from a countries where the people are killing each other for the, the money you know for the business that grows and grows around this food rather than man can we just eat what grows on this on, on this area you know where i live for example mm -hmm. like i'm not gonna die if i don't eat avocados It takes at least 18 gallons of water to produce a single avocado. What? Almost 70 liters. 70 liters to produce one avocado. One avocado, 70 liters. Wow. Esta provincia, la provincia de Petorca, tiene dos ríos. El río Petorca, que está del otro lado del valle, y el río Ligua. El río Petorca se declaró en restricción agotado el año 97 y el río Ligua se declaró en restricción agotado el año 2004. El modelo de agronegocio ha generado una depredación del territorio y ha privado al pueblo pobre de un elemento que es esencial, del agua. Da pena ver cómo se muere este arbolito Yo lo planteé con todo el amor del mundo. Uno vive de esto. Vive de la tierra, vive. Y cuando vienen y te lo arrebatan, así, es triste, es muy triste. Lo siento de adentro. Mira la tierra seca, no tiene, no tiene ni futuro, yo tampoco. A esta edad, a esta edad que yo tengo. Okay, cool. We worry so much about our own health. Get my healthy fat for my healthy diet because it's not just about vegan. I want to make that clear, you know, because on the other side, there's the same, you know, yeah. about the healthy meat, the healthy uh -huh. beef, and fuck it. <laughs> and I just don't care of the impact on the, on the ecosystem. When I stop eating meat and fish, I stop because I got to know what was the process mm -hmm. behind the piece of meat on my plate. So I've got a question for you. Let's say that all food items that are mass produced and popular probably cause some kind of harm to the people that produce it, to the environment. So are you going to stop eating? No. And we shouldn't say that one thing's worse than another. It's just the scale and popularity of something that encourages mass production, that encourages destruction. Mm -hmm. I understand that. I just want to be aware of what I'm doing, what are my choices. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's not about the actual item, it's about what's happening behind that. The life of these people is sacred. The land is sacred. A river that is dry is sacred. Whatever it comes on my dish, on my table, it's sacred because there is so much involved in there. Mm -hmm. I don't want to cry it out. <laughs> <laughs> cry it out, baby. It, it all comes down to the disconnection, right? Like, because the connection is not made when people buy, even now, I watched this documentary now, I made the connection, but let's say six months down the line, this is kind of faded. Okay. If, unless you keep the connection vivid, alive, alive yeah. you get back on the train to the same automatic, disconnected habits. Unless you're really interested and curious, you never find this out. 
That's what sacred food is all about. What's the sacred food song? It's the sacred food Thanks for watching. Subscribe.